Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and I've got an extra special guest for you today, and one that I've had on my channel before. Uh, he is an author, conference speaker, conference organizer. He's actually organizing the Red Pill Expo. He's done that before, but an amazing conference where you're gonna hear um, all kinds of government corruption exposed on every single level. Uh, I'm even thinking about going to this event, so it should be good, but it's the Red Pill, Red Pill Expo or the Red Pill? Redpillexpo.org. Perfect, and there's gonna be information below for you guys to check out the conference, who's speaking, lots of great people. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, he also wrote Technocracy Rising, and he's got a website which I actually use as a news source quite often, but technocracy.news. So Patrick, uh, that was a big intro, uh, but can you tell us, um, I guess for starters, what technocracy is, for those who may not know, uh, because this is something that you really believe is infiltrating our culture and kind of taking over, and it's obviously part of the globalist plan, so uh, shed some light on that. I really do. Technocracy is, the science of social engineering. And if you don't know what social engineering is, it's the stuff you don't like when people are trying to tell you what to do, where they make the decisions and you don't. Social engineering. The science of social engineering is the application of the scientific method to manage society. And if people don't understand it, which many people still don't, they wouldn't understand the concept. They're feeling the effects of it today as they get more and more and more limited as about the things they can do and can't do. Try and get a building permit in some areas, you know, for something you want to do to your own property. Uh, try to, uh, you know, try to uh, uh, get money out of the bank on a weekend when you've got a bunch, bunch of money in the bank and you can't get more than $300 out of the bank. You're, you know, they tell you, no, sorry, you, you can't get any more money out. Well, why not? It's my money. I want it. Well, they'll just shake their head and say, I'm sorry, but you know, that's the rules. Well, technocracy is rule by rules as well. And the rules are all set into computer algorithms that decide what you can and can't do. We see this in China today, which is a technocracy, by the way. China has a social credit scoring system where they collect data on every conceivable thing that a person does who they know, who their friends are, what they buy, where they go, what they post on their social media. And, and let me you, add, add about China. I know yeah. I'm interrupting, but they are just had a marriage, if you will, with Apple. Yes. And Apple has decided to go ahead and share all the information. It's very disturbing. With China. Very disturbing, uh, not merger, but you know, yeah. association. Yeah. China is autocratic for sure. It's collectivist for sure, but it's not communist anymore. It's, techn it's, it's a technocracy. And global scholars have pegged this very clearly that China is a technocracy. But this social credit system, if you don't score correctly, you will have social services denied to you and you'll never know what hits you. Like, you, for instance, uh, a story just recently uh, you, uh, says that, well, you may not be able to send your kids to private school. You may not be able to rent an apartment in a certain area because it's too risky for you. Um, you may not be able to travel to certain parts of the country because you're a bad boy or a bad girl. And uh, uh, if, if you're associated with somebody who is a bad person, according to them, your social credit score will be dropped, lowered as well, just because you associate your friends with them on their social media or whatever. It's absolutely insane. It's using data as a weapon against the people. It's, you could call it weaponized data if you want, but it's using normal day-to-day -day data in society to... Combine that with computer analysis to decide who should get privileges and who shouldn't get privileges. So considering we, what, what we're seeing in America, obviously, you guys know you watch a ton of information uh, on my channel and multiple others, uh, but if we consider what they're doing in America, we have the NSA, mm -hmm. the CIA, which mm -hmm. has a subsection of, a, of the NSA. We have televisions that can record mm -hmm. what you say. Streetlights even do that. All kinds of patents that record our data. We had Edward Snowden come out saying the mass amounts of data. We have Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, giving information to the government, creating those mm -hmm. profiles. So would you say, then I have a two-part question, are we headed that direction and how far are Absolutely we? Absolutely we are. Much of the technology that was that's being used in China today originated here in the United States. The problem was it was patently illegal to use it here at the time. So they exported it to China, who was more than willing to take it to further their own technocratic dictatorship, if you will. Now that they perfected it in China, guess what's happening? It's coming back here. 
and it's going to be re-imported back to America. You already see bits and pieces of this already. For instance, many cities have adopted pre-crime analysis systems. Ma what is it? Pre-crime. Yeah, <laughs> Pre -crime. I know. It's no, like, not the ooh. Matrix, but what's the other one? Oh. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> blanking on the name of the movie. It, it, there was a whole pre-crime with it the was Tom, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, pre-crime analysis is predicting where crime, crime is going to happen based, you know, using artificial intelligence and stuff like this. And it's basically just predicting the future is what it is, but it's, it's nonsensical. But we see this stuff coming back here. So if some program decides that, that Lisa Haven is about to create a crime somewhere, they're going to show up at your door before you do it and prevent you from doing it, they say, which is insane too. But I mean, that this, this is the mentality of the technocrat mind. It's crazy. So this technology is coming back. You see cameras popping up everywhere now. Uh, ad infinitum. They're just, they're everywhere. And uh, you see the onslaught now of 5G technology for cell phone, you know, using mostly for cell phones, but it's going to be used for a myriad of other things to connect the so-called Internet of Things together in real time. This has never been done before, but 5G is going to be so fast, it's actually it's going to almost be like gigabit Ethernet, which some people have, and you know how fast that is. Oh, yeah. The wireless technology now is going to almost be that fast where it will allow the real-time communication between all these devices and sensors throughout our society, and all that data is going to be collected. We used to say decades ago, follow the money, follow the power. That was a reliable way to get to what's going on. Today, follow the data, follow the power. Watch where your data is going. When your data leaves you, and I, I don't want to sound mystical about this, but yeah. when, you, when, you see, when you see your data going out from you somewhere, follow the trail. And you'll find out <clears throat> who's at the end of it and where the power actually lies. I think that's a bold statement because it's so true. When I've explained on my channel multiple times how we're in an information war. Uh, it's a different kind of war, I think, that we've never experienced on any level before because we have the freedom of the internet, which is under attack constantly. I mean, massively. And these are things I think we all have to be aware of, especially when we have that rising in America. So how far do you think, I know you can't put a timestamp on mm -hmm. anything, we never can, but I mean, we're talking years, decades, what would America look like? Yeah, we're talking, we're, at this point, we're just talking a few years. <clears throat> the only thing left to really energize the Internet of Things to make this happen is the implementation of 5G uh, tech, uh, communication technology. And that's already being done around the world, pilot studies and stuff. And that's just a higher, more better... It's a higher frequency and, and for the most part, and it's, nobody's really done any medical testing on it either, which is another concern, but it's a higher frequency, it's, it's major heavy duty as far as speed is concerned. Mm -hmm. And all of the Internet of Things devices, you know, what are we talking about? We're talking about the smart meters on your home. We're talking about, you know, your, your, uh, uh, your uh, smart technology and the things inside your home, like your thermostat, like your washing machine and dryer and all those sorts of things. These are now equipped with Wi-Fi technology that can be, you know, sucked in from, from outside. And <clears throat> you're talking about cameras and stuff, all the Wi-Fi enabled cameras that, that are all over the place, you know. You know, these things also can be incorporated into the Internet of Things where everything can be accumulated on demand, just real time. This has never been able to happen. It has never happened like this before. So it's a little bit of an unknown in one sense. What are they going to do with this? Well, I, I can't believe at this point that they have any idea of being benevolent towards you and I. But in China, if China is an example, China is using this technology right now to completely suppress their citizens. They're, they're totally managed. They can't move left, they can't move right. They, you know, they're, the system knows what they're gonna do before they know it. That's huge. And I think, uh, here's one of the other things, we had a, a little bit of a conversation off the record uh, before we get in, but he writes a book, um, Technocracy Rising, Great book, uh, but there was also a counter to that that was written just this year. Now, you wrote your book when? I wrote my book in two, at the, right at the end of 2015. 2015. Um, yeah. And there's a new one that came out that actually pushes exactly what he's been talking yeah. about since the beginning <clears throat> of this video uh, about the technocracy <clears throat> principles. We'll okay, show it on the camera. I'm back. <laughs> uh, technocracy in America. This one uh, was written this year, you said? 
This was written early last year. Early last year. Mm -hmm. Now this guy is, I'll, well, I'll let you tell him, but basically this book pushes mm -hmm. what we don't want, which is technocracy in America. So this is a globalist pushing globalist principles. And he was named one of the, well, I'll let you say. Yeah, this is a pro, Dr. Parag Khanna is one of the leading global scholars in the world. He's down in Singapore, based in, uh, at the U School for Public Policy in Singapore. And he's young, he's articulate, he's a, he's a handsome young guy, I have to say too. Uh, but the global elite absolutely love this guy. They, they listen to everything he says, they, write, they read all of his books. He's written several already that are highly celebrated. And he wrote this little book um, a couple, uh, just last year called Technocracy in America. And he is a technocrat himself. He praises Singapore, he praises China, he praises Korea, uh, he praises Japan. Uh, and Switzerland, but he really condemns America in this book is because he says America's democracy is dead. Of course, we don't have a democracy here, but that's what they think. Yeah. He says it's dead and that we need to implement direct technocracy in America. The model which he would most uh, favorably put forth is a model that we see in China today, where there's a, a Politburo, there's a committee of, uh, you know, seven people that uh, have, they have a head, of course, but the it's a committee of seven that kind of runs everything in the country. Switzerland has the same, uh, you know, head model. They don't have one president. They have a committee of seven. And in this book, he says radical stuff. This is all, it could have been written straight out of the 1930s when technocracy was originally started. He says, we need to get rid of the Senate. The Senate is useless to us in a direct technocracy. Send them home start instead by sending assembly of governors. And they, he says, well, every state should elect two governors. One governor would be the home governor. The other governor goes to assembly of governors to work in Washington and be the executive managers, if you will, of society. He says, well, we need to get rid of the office of the president. We need to have a committee of presidents. We need to elect seven co-presidents. And they all work together to get everything done. And then he says the constitution, well, let's see, there's no Senate anymore. so." The Constitution should be turned over to the Supreme Court for management and updating. Just minor things, you understand. The rest of society, all the agencies, need to be run by technocrats who will simply just do their thing with no accountability to the people. This is radical, radical stuff. Never seen anything like this in America before. And see, that's the, the sad part. Influential people in America are reading books like this, promoting it, pushing it, and he's one of the 75 most influential people in the world, you said? He was, and one of the magazines, I think it was Esquire, said that he was on the, 70, on the 75 most influential list. Mm. Like, wow, there you go. I would put him straight dead at the bottom, because this kind of <clears throat> style is, I, I mean, this is... This is very bad news, especially when we have powerful people like that, reading books like that, pushing those agendas. Uh, again, which is why I am such a big supporter of, let's get the truth out, let's find what's really going on, uh, supporting people <laughs> such as yourself, and uh, doing these interviews and getting the information out, and it's critical that you do that as well. So with that, do you have any closing thoughts that you wanna share, and then we'll, we'll share some of the website and information again after that, but any closing thoughts that you wanna say that you think they need to know? Well, I have some closing thoughts. Number one, people need to get educated, and they get informed. You cannot fight an enemy you don't know. And we do have an enemy. <clears throat> they're, they're not at the lowest level in one sense. You know, if you're looking too low, you'll never see them. If you look at the political battles, you're never gonna see them either because you know, people fighting over Democrat, you know, Republican, conservative, liberal. What these technocrats are doing is way above that. They're, they don't care who's in power. They use both sides with equal ease, ease of use, so to speak. But <clears throat> what people need to do, they need to start with an open mind, exploring technocracy and what the global elite are saying about it. Because where there's smoke, there's fire. When you have books like Prague Khanna's book coming out, Technocracy in America, you better wake up because this is what they are talking about behind closed doors. I've been following this stuff for 40 years, Lisa. <clears throat> we wrote about the Trilateral Commission way back in the 1970s and what they were doing behind closed doors. We found out because they wrote very prolifically all what they're talking about. We dug it out. We read it. We said, people, if they do what they're saying they're going to do, we're in trouble. America's going to get turned upside down. Nobody listened, of course, but there at that time, but there it was. 
It was in black and white. This time around, we're not going to get another chance, in my opinion. Okay. They're saying what they're going to do. They have the means to do it. They have all the platform to do it. And they're proceeding to do it. It's all around us. And I bet everybody watching this video has something that they can feel the manacle closing it around their neck on, on some kind of limitation where they're being told, no, you can't do that. Or if you move this way, no, you can't do that. Everybody's starting to feel pain. It's time to wake up and address where is this coming from? Who is doing this to us? And once you find out, once you see the picture, you can't unsee it, but when you find out who they are, it's not that difficult then to confront them because these people have never been confronted. They've just been able to coast along like a submarine, right, under the water. Occasionally a periscope comes up and, you know, well, there they are over there. But they've just been cruising along under the water, doing their stuff like, you know, with, with no resistance whatsoever. And I would suggest when they are confronted, they don't hold up very well at all. They're not used to it. They have no answers. And when you hit them with logic and truth and just the, the will of the American people, they start to sweat. And we need to make them sweat. It's just that simple. That's true. Yeah. And I, I couldn't agree more. And the thing is, we need to understand that even though these bubbles might feel like we've heard it before, we all know what's going on, and we, we live in almost a desensitized kind of, yeah. you had brought that up earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can't be desensitized to trilateral commission or the UN or Agenda 21, these policies. We have to now understand that they are something and take a stand against it in our schools, in the voting box, uh, at home, passing out information, sharing videos, the Red Pill Expo, yep. get involved in these kinds of things, bring people to events like that because this is the way that we have to stand in the gap to win the generation or we're gonna be headed for far, far worse, unfortunately. Um, so with that, Pat, uh, do you wanna share your book, your website, more information sure. on the Red Pill Expo, the date and location as well? You can well. find my website at technocracy.news and that I've abandoned everything else I've been doing over the years, rolled it all into technocracy.news because I feel that is the most important thing at this point to get out to people. And uh, you can find my book there as well, but it's also on Amazon. If you go to Amazon, you'll find 127 five-star reviews that you might want to read through and find out why my book has, over the last two and a half years, received five-star uh, rating on Amazon.com. I and suppose that makes them grind their teeth. But the name and, and Patrick the, Wood is the author, obviously. That's right. The name is Technocracy Rising, the Trojan Horse of Global uh, Transformation. And I am the author, of course, Patrick Wood. And uh, so you can get it on my website. I'd love to send out an, an autographed copy if anybody buys it from me directly. They can't do that with Amazon because they print them and they set them out and get quick delivery though from Amazon. But um, the only way you can really understand it, I'm afraid, is to read the book. And yeah. at this point, technocracy.news, I'm sad to say this, it's the only website on the internet, the only one in the entire world that is dedicated to a critique of technocracy. Can you believe that? Right, it's a good one. Sometimes I wake up and I think, maybe I'm crazy. You know, maybe it's just crazy doing this. There's yeah. nobody else. There's no competition at all. But you would think by this time I would have hundreds of thousands of visitors a day. But guess what? It ain't there yet. But never. I'm not. But I'm not going to quit. This is so important. People sooner or later are going to wake up to it and they're going to go, where can I get information? And I'm just going to hold a flag up because over here. <laughs> it's over here technocracy.news. Absolutely. And then if anybody wants to check out the Red Pill Expo, uh, yeah. the location and date on that as well. Redpillexpo.org is going to be held in Spokane, Washington this year, June 21, 2, and 3. It's going to be amazing again. We, we've got a group of about 20 speakers across two days. It's jam-packed. Some of the best top people in the world in, in, in their given area. We're going to have Larry Pratt come and talk to us about gun rights and what's going on in Washington with, with gun rights these days. We have Tom DeWeese coming from American Policy Center to address us on Agenda 21 and, and property rights issues and stuff. He's a world-renowned expert on that. We've got other people of that caliber coming to, to address their specific topic. We've got a, a lady by the name of Twyla Brays coming from the National uh, health, uh, national, I want to say national health freedom, but she's written a book called um, <clears throat> Big Brother in the Exam Room. <laughs> and she understands technocracy. 
health care is falling into the hands of these people. Well, we're trying, what we're trying to do is bring together a diverse group of people to hit the nail on the head where people want information like, what's wrong with this area in the world? What's wrong with this area? We've got a guy coming, Dr. Duke Pesta, to talk about education and Common Core and how that has transformed the education system. And this guy is a world-renowned speaker and, and author. He's a professor emeritus at uh, University of Wisconsin, I believe. It's such a lineup, amazing lineup of people coming to speak to us. There's nothing like it in anywhere in our country that, and, and except for the one we did last year, absolutely nothing like this in the last 20 years. Awesome. So make sure you guys check all that out. I'm going to have it below. Uh, again, that was in Spokane, Washington. You said June. June 21 to 23. 21 to 23. And by the way, if you cannot come, if you say, oh, you look at the price and you think, oh, I don't know if I can do that. We're going to live stream the whole thing. We're going to have a news, a news center set up where we will provide commentary between the speakers even. It's going to oh, be nice. nonstop coverage <laughs> from seven, probably about 7 in the morning to 7 at night. You're going to get 24 hours of programming if you sign up for the live stream ticket. And I'm encouraging people, get a house party started. You know, make like it's <laughs> Christmas, have an open house, get out, the, you know, get out the snacks, get out the you know, 4th of July stuff a little early. Invite your friends over to come and get, you know, pick, on, pick up on some of the speakers that we're having. Stay for an hour, two or three, maybe a whole afternoon if you want. And get educated for peace sake. It's a wonderful opportunity. Perfect. Love it. Well, thank you guys again for tuning into my channel here. All the information is below in the description box there. So make sure you check out all of that. And thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven, and that was Patrick Wood signing out.